So just a little bit of terminology before we get going here. A relation, this is pretty much any sort of pattern between two variables that you can represent as ordered pairs, table of values, a graph, or an equation. So what we're gonna be doing from this point forward is we're gonna start using the word function. This is a special type of relation where every x value corresponds to exactly one y value. So pretty much the way functions work, you take some x value, you put it into your function, some stuff happens, your x value circles around, and it gets spit back out as some sort of output. And the value that comes out is your y value. Okay, so if you think about a, a function as sort of like a machine, picture like your car, for instance, if you drive to the gas station, you put gas in, your output would be the, the carbon dioxide. Okay, so a function is just a, kind of like a machine. You put something in, you get something out. All right, so the vertical line test. This is a way of determining whether a relation is a function. Not all relations are functions, but all functions are relations. So just kind of wrestle with that one for a minute. So pretty much what this thing does is tells you if a relation is a function, and the way it works is if you take a vertical line and you pass it over your relation, and at each point, there's only one point on your vertical line, then you've got yourself a function. So we're gonna do a couple examples here. I'm just gonna plot these points, and then we're gonna use the vertical line test, and we're gonna classify these as either functions or relations. Okay, so really quickly, I'm gonna plot these points this is the relation that we're, that we're dealing with. If I plot these points and I take a vertical line, I'm gonna pass this vertical line through all of these points. And you can see there is never a point where there are two points on my vertical line. All right, I pass through the first point, there's only one, one point, one point, and one point. So from that test, the vertical line test, we can conclude that this relation is a function. So for every x value, there's only one y value. We put an x value in, we get a y value out. So let's take a peek at this one. So let's quickly plot these points. Okay, so same thing. I'm gonna take my vertical line and I'm gonna pass it through my points. So once I pass through this first point, there is only one point on that vertical line. And you can see here, uh-oh, as I pass through my next point, there are actually two points on this vertical line. This relation violates the vertical line test. You can see there are two points on that vertical line. And from that, we can conclude that this relation is not a function. So that's how the vertical line test works. Keep that in mind. If you've got a pencil or something handy and you've got a graph, you can just take your pencil, turn it into a vertical line and pass it over your relation. If you see a situation like this, your relation is not a function. All right, so just another example here, determine whether the following relations are functions or not. Some of these look familiar to you. We've done one like this already, so I'll just kind of zip through this one. We're gonna take a vertical line and we're gonna pass it through our points. And you can see here, yeah, this one checks out. There's never a spot where there are more than one point on that vertical line. So we're gonna conclude, yes, this one is in fact a function. Okay, this guy here, part B, this one should look pretty familiar. This is a parabola. You're used to these sorts of graphs at this point. You pass your vertical line through your parabola. You can see as you move from left to right, there's only ever going to be one point on my vertical line at a time. Okay, so this guy definitely is also a function. Okay, let's move down to part C here. So I'm looking at this circle. If I pass this line through my, my relation here, you can see there's definitely a couple spots where we violate our vertical line test. So you can see here, there's two points on that vertical line. And as it turns out, if I keep moving my vertical line, there will always be two points on that vertical line. This relation is definitely not a function. So this guy, same thing. This looks like a parabola, but it's actually, it's been rotated by 90 degrees. You can see as it passes vertical line through the relation, you've got a violation of the vertical line test. You've got two points on that vertical line. Therefore, this guy is not considered a function either. All right, so that's kind of the end of the vertical line test piece of this. This is gonna be something new that I'm gonna be introducing in these videos, and you're gonna be using this as you move forward. This is sort of like a new notation that we use when we talk about functions. So this is definitely something you wanna get used to using. Function notation describes the value of a function at a certain x value. So this is gonna be really confusing at first, but I promise it's not really anything new. So for example, f at x, that's how we read this, f at x, f at x, this says the value of f, so the value of your function, at x, OK? 
Okay, so this does not say f times x. That's one of the things people confuse. It says the value of the function at x. And then this would be our, our function here. So this, if you were to graph this, this is a, just a, a straight line with a slope of two passing through three. If you if just check really quickly, that definitely passes the vertical line test. So this would be a function. So just get used to using this f at x, um, but, but don't panic. It's essentially the exact same thing as x, y notation. So instead of f at x, I could just say y equals 2x plus 3. It's the exact same thing. Your f at x just refers to value of your function, also known as the y value. Right? So if you think about it, take an x, put it into your function, evaluate your function, you're going to get a y out. That's your f, right? the value of your function. So one more concept I want to cover in this video lesson, evaluating functions. So to find the value of a function at a given x value, we simply sub in the value of x into the function. Okay, so for example, being given a line here, it says for the function f at x equals 2x minus 4, find f at negative 1. So remember, using our, our knowledge of function notation, we're looking for the value of the function at negative 1. So my instructions here tell me to simply sub in the value of x into the function. So I'm going to take x, which happens to be negative 1 in this case, and I'm going to substitute it in for x. So I'm going to take this negative 1 and I'm going to plug it in wherever you see an x in your function. Okay, so I'm going to have 2 and now I'm multiplying by negative 1 and I'm subtracting 4. So that's what this says. Take negative 1, jam it into your function and see what you get. So I've got 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2 minus 4, I end up with negative 6. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for parts B and C here as well. I'm going to evaluate the function at zero. So I'm going to see what happens when I put zero into my function. What does my function machine spit out? Well, I've got two. I'm multiplying by zero. So I have zero minus four. So I get negative four. Same thing for part C. I'm going to evaluate the function at one. I'm going to see what the value of this function is at one. So I put one into the line and you can see I get negative two out. Okay, so I just mentioned that this is going to be a line. We know this because we have a slope of two here. We've got an exponent of one, which means this is definitely a linear function. We've got a y-intercept of negative four. So this is kind of handy uh, because what I've got here, remember these are x values, right? I've subbed in three x values and I've got three y values. So this is kind of neat because I could actually plot this, this graph. We know this is a line, but we could actually just take our x values and our y values and plot a graph quickly. So why don't we do that? Let's sub in negative one, right? We go back negative one, we end up getting negative six. If we sub in zero, we get negative four. I'm just kind of eyeballing my scale here. Uh, and if I sub in one, I get negative two. Okay, well, no surprises there. It is a linear function. And that's kind of just how you can use this function notation to evaluate functions and kind of get an idea of what these graphs look like. All right, so just another example here, some more interesting functions. We're just gonna treat this like any other function. We're gonna take f at one. We're gonna substitute one in for x and see what value we get. So when we put one in, Right, we have a one substituted for every x. One squared is one times three. We're gonna subtract one and add seven, end up with nine. A little more difficult example here. We're gonna evaluate this function when x is one half. So we're gonna take one half and jam it into this function. We're gonna see what the y value would be that comes out on the other end. Okay, so we substitute in one half. We've got six times a half on top, that's three. We've got one half plus one on the bottom, that's three over two. Remember, if you're, if you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as flipping the fraction and multiplying. You can see we end up with two as our answer. If I take one half, I jam it into my function, I'm gonna get a y value out, which happens to be two. One more quick example, I'm actually gonna take a binomial and I'm gonna substitute it into my function. Remember this says, evaluate the function at x minus one. So this isn't a number, this is an expression, but I can take that and put it into my function. So let's see what happens when I do that. Wherever you see an x, I'm gonna take x minus one, and I'm gonna put it in for that x. So when I do that, instead of x, right, picture this was x, I now have x minus one. And I can just kind of collect my like terms here. I've got a, a negative one and a two, I can add those together to get one. And this ends up being what I get when I substitute x minus one in. Okay, so this is great, because now what we can do, given any function, you can essentially substitute in any number of your choosing into x and see what comes out on the other end. So you've got an x, you've got a y, you can plot yourself a graph for pretty much any given function.